Welcome back to First Listen, everybody. My name is Tenthile, and I hope you're doing well today. This week on First Listen, we checked out The Sword's latest release, their sixth studio album, Use Future. This band is really, really interesting. Having only listened to a few tracks, maybe, I don't know, 15 or 20, across a couple of their albums, I really don't know a lot about this band. But what I have heard and what I do know, I really like. Coming off of their most recent release, High Country, I definitely did not know what to expect. They also had a little accompaniment in there, a whole acoustic album called Low Country, that, man, you take those two little albums together and you just love the band. Really good stuff. You go back to some of the previous stuff on, I believe it's a Cryphon. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but there's some really cool stuff there too. Just a really easy band to listen to, some good metal vibe on there, but as we get into this first listen, know that this is a concept album. It is not your traditional metal album. So let's go. The album opens with Prelude, an interlude track that really is over before you know it. And it quickly fades right into Deadly Nightshade, a track that feels very funky. And to be honest, the vibe did not hit me right away. It took me about a minute or two into the track before I was like, oh yeah, yeah, this is, this is good. The, the lyrics are very, very interesting, but once that vibe hit, I was, I was in. I was like, let's see where this goes. I didn't know it then, and I know it now, that we were on kind of a concept journey through this. It's very important to kind of just listen and feel the record. So continuing on, we have Twilight Sunrise, a track that, well, to be honest, is not about the vocals. I don't feel like the vocals are really the focal point in a lot of this release anyway, but the instrumentals on this track particularly are phenomenal. Very good at expressing all the emotions and feelings that they're looking for, and there are some vocals that are peppered in throughout this track, but they do fall to the back and sometimes they fade and you almost forget that they're there because you're kind of just melted into the track. It's a great feeling. The screeching reverb from the amps just pulls you in. Everything just does its thing, feels just very together as we get through the Wild Sky, a track that, well, it's all instrumental, no vocals on this, and I don't think it needs them either. This thing just builds and builds and builds, and it's a great build. The whole way until it hits about three minutes in, a solo, it kind of knocked uh, my socks off. I, I really liked it. The whole track is just kind of like this feeling of peacefulness, literally like a wild sky. If you've ever seen the sky at night, just out in the wilderness, it just perfectly described it for me. It's a very cool feeling to have that just in instrumentals. Man, good stuff. Then we have Intermezzo, which quickly just serves as a bridge to Sea of Green. A track that is just crazy good. It's a little bit bluesy and methodical though. That, that's it's kind of a different concept for me. It's vocal delivery is just where it needs to be. Everything is just where it needs to be on this track. It kind of just guides you back and forth with this, this thing that you can't quite explain and it takes you on this great ride the whole way through. I mean, man, this album is just about the experience. I feel like that can't be stressed enough. Some piano and some synths. Oh man, they really slowly guide you in to Nocturne. A track that, 
man, I melted into this. Before I knew it, I was like two minutes into the track and it felt so right. It just felt like I was floating on clouds to somewhere that I wasn't really sure where I was gonna end up. No destination known, no control, no plans, just floating. It's a beautiful thing when that happens. A track just grabs you, you lose all sense of everything around you, and you just float. I think that's what they were going for. At least that's how it hit me. And maybe it's that guitar or that rhythmic tapping, but I don't know. It was a great, great ride. Seemingly like it knew something. The album transitions to Don't Get Comfortable. Man, I was comfortable. This track really pulled me out of the lullaby. Its message is, is really good. Literally, don't get comfortable. Don't be complacent. If you get to that point and you stay in that complacency, it could really wreck you before you're ready for it, before you even know anything. This track just really really spoke to me because I feel like some people get really complacent in all of their stuff and you shouldn't you just shouldn't I really want to listen to this track a couple more times because I feel like every time you listen to it it might tell you something different and the guitar on here just really sings to you it's really doing the majority of the vocals I feel it's really pleading with you. Don't get comfortable. Don't do it. Then we have the title track, Use Future. This track is insanely good. It really rocks you right away. Rocks you so hard. But not in like the traditional heavy metal sense. This track does it a little bit differently. And it's telling you a story about the future. For me, I was guided on an unavoidable journey. Just sent through all of it in such a way that I don't know if I'm back yet. This happens to me from time to time with releases like this. These concept albums that just are trying to speak to you and tell you this message and you sometimes don't always know the message until long after you've listened. I feel like the message is something about the future is not safe. It's literally used up. And it's something about the notes in here, the beautiful notes and the guitar. It just all comes together so well, so beautifully, so much melancholy there. What a cool feeling. Woo, that opening riff, I'm come and gone, just really opened me up. And then I felt like the vocals were like the softest relief as they kind of just floated and felt a little bit peppered in the background. It was awesome. So awesome to just go to the beat and kind of just fade in it. Like it was some kind of psychedelic experience, one I've never had but I definitely had something here. Then somewhat back to reality, we have Book of Toth, a track that feels more of the same. It's a good sameness though. It's a sameness of just good stuff. You can't describe it. You can't put your finger on it. It just fits together so well that there's not much to say about it. You just feel it. Another infectious riff here on Brown Mountain. A track that takes you back and forth and just really vibes you. This track, I, I didn't really know where it was gonna take me, but it took me somewhere. It took me on this kind of peaceful journey 
of acceptance and reflection into this abyss. The whole track just feels like it's fading into this abyss. And that abyss actually turns out to be the final track, Reprise, which just comes in as the album started. It just fades in and out. The whole thing feels like if you listen to it on repeat, you may not know that you're listening to the same album again because you're going to feel something totally different. I can't wait to listen to this one a second time. It's going to be a heck of an experience. And it's an experience I 100% recommend everyone have. I don't have a number for this rating. I'm going to leave that down to you guys in the comments. Hit them up. This is an experience. What a concept album. Just a heck of an experience that I hope to have again and again. That's going to do it for this edition of First Listen. I hope you enjoyed. This was a very cool album. And I hope to see you in the next First Listen. Have a nice day.